Hello, I'm Jack. Welcome to Practical Programming Channel. In this video, I will discuss another code update for WebGPU applications. Starting from June 28, you may find that you cannot run the sample code for my several WebGPU step-by-step -step video series on Chrome Canary, including video series 2, 3, 5, and 6. But those examples can still run on Microsoft Edge Canary. The common feature used in those four videos is that we define the vertex data directly in the vertex seeder. The issue comes from Chrome Canary that no longer supports global variables defined using the let keyword. This change in Chrome Canary does not affect the other examples that use the GPU buffer to define the vertex data. In order to run those examples on Chrome Canary, we need to make a corresponding code update. First, we need to change the lag keyword to the wall keyword. We can then use either the module scope variables or function scope variables to specify the vertex data in the set code. I have updated the code example for those four videos on my GitHub repository. You can clone the source code and you should be able to run those examples on Chrome Canary. Now I will use the code for video 3 to illustrate how to update the code. Again, we will use the gate tool to clone the source code used in the third video. Now open a command prompt window and run the following command gate. Paste this link. This will generate a web GPU 03 folder on your local machine. This folder contains all the source code used in that video. Now CD into this folder. CD web GPU 03. And now we can start Visual Studio Code with the command code period. Okay, this is the Visual Studio Code interface. We can close this uh, welcome page. Here contains all the source code used in the third video series. Now let's open a new terminal window. And I use the command npm install to restore the npm packages. Okay, finished. Now all the installed package are stored in the node modules folder. In this sample application, I already updated the seeder code to reflect these changes in Chrome Canary. From SRC folder, you can open seeder.ts file. Here the seeder function contains the updated code. To demonstrate how to update the seeder code, we first remove this update code from here. This update code, remove it, and change the old code here called seeder1 to seeder. Now save this file. Let's bound our code. Use uh, this command to see what happened. npm run prod. Okay, the bound file is created successfully. Now click on the go live link to open Chrome Canary. You can see just a red rectangle without the colorful triangle on this page. If we open the Chrome Canary development console, you will see some error messages here the tanked WGSL reader failure. An index must be signed or unsigned integer. Here the vertex index. If you look at the code, here build-in index, we define 
is U32. This is unassigned integer. We already did that. The issue is not from the vertex index, but from the definition for position and color here. In new WGSL specification, there are two keywords, light and raw. The light specify a name for a value. Once the value for a lot declaration is computed, it is immutable. That is, it cannot be changed. So we can use the light keyword to define constant in WGSL. The raw keywords specify a variable name and also specify the reference type, such as storage class, store type, or access mode. For our position here and the color definition, they keep changing when the vertex index changes. So we need to change the light to world keyword here. We need to change light to world. Now let's discuss the module scope variable and the function scope variable. A module scope variable is declared outside all functions. It is available for all functions, just like here. We define these two variables outside of the vertex main function and the fragment main function. So these two variables will be available for these two functions. We call this the module scope variable. You can also most like the global variables. The module scope variable must be declared with an explicit storage class, such as private, workgroup, uniform, etc. Why? For a function scope variable, it is declared inside a function body and only available for this specific function. This function is always in function storage class. So the storage decoration is optional because it is, it is always in function storage class. When an initial value is specified, the storage type can also be omitted from the declaration. In this case, the storage type is a type of the result of evaluating the initial value. This means that we can easily define a function scope variable by simply specifying the variable name and its initial value. For our case, we can use either module scope or function scope variable to define our position and color data. Now let's update our Cedar code. First, uh, we use the module scope variable. Here we have changed the lead keyword to wall here for the position and color. Now we can rebound our file and uh, see what happened. First, let's save this file and rebound. OK, let's see what's the result. Let's refresh the page. Still is red rectangle, so without colorful triangle, so it's up on this page. So here uh, you can see the error message here. Global variable must have a storage class. So we need to uh, make uh, other change to our code. So let's add the storage class. Here we can use the private as our storage class, meaning the variable can be shared among the same in location. Uh, that's enough for our example. So let's put a private here. Let's save this file and rebound our code. Okay, let's go check the results. You can see a colorful triangle shows up on this page and without any error on the development cancel. So that's great. Since these two variables the position and the color here are used only by the vertex main function. You can see 
only the main function use position and color. The fragment main function does not use these two variables. So we can use the function scope variable by placing these two variables inside this main function. So we just move these two variables inside this main function. But we need to change the storage class to the function because inside the function scope is always in the function storage class. So we have to change this to the function. Same thing here. Then save this file and rebound it. Okay, uh, let's check the results on Chrome Canary. You can refresh. You can see the colorful triangle on this page without any error message. As mentioned previously, for a function scope variable, the storage class is optional since it is always in the function storage class. And the storage type can also be omitted if it has an initial value. So here we can remove this storage class, the function, and also the store type here, because we have an initial value here. Initial value. So we don't need this store type. So let's save this file and rebound it. Let's check the results. Okay, you still see the colorful triangle without any error. From this code update, you can see that the last method is the simplest. So I have used this method to update the code for the video series 2, 3, 5, and 6 in my GitHub repository. From this code update, you can see that WebGPU is a work-in-progress project. It changes frequently. I will keep updating the sample code in my GitHub repository. If you found the code example discussed in my video series not working anymore, you can re-download the updated code from this GitHub repository. Usually, this updated code should work. Otherwise, you can leave me a comment on my video. I will try to fix it as soon as possible. I will end this video here. See you next time. Bye.